Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the Rizu Forest. We will go over here, so that's on 120 times speed. It can stay on 120 times speed, there's no harm with that. And we will make our way up here and start trimming the trees on the edge just along here. I'd like to get that done. If we can clear these trees out of the way, that would be fantastic. So I am going to take all of the trees out that I want to remove from this. Get that done now. Well, we'll do a bit now in February and then we'll do a bit in March and, and, and so on. And then we can go back to working on decorating our houses. I also need to build the road that we want over here. See, these trees here, if I just keep the branches back out of the way, then I don't need to worry about them getting in the way, and we don't need to worry about them causing us any problems, just so long as I move them off of our main road. Once I do that, once that bit, once this bit is done, so I think there's one... There isn't one over here at the moment I want to clear. There's that one that I do want to clear. Once I've got this bit done, we can see about starting to actually make the road down through. That that would be quite cool if I can make the road all the way down through. It's always a bit of a nuisance trying to... Ah, it would help if I... Yeah. There we go. Right. Swing you back around that way. The other thing that I like about this is that the Ponzi Scorpion, it you moved around with the cab. Yes, I think you did. So when you rotated the cab, your camera view vo uh, rotated around as well. And if I remember correctly, I might be remembering that bit wrong. But I think you did. And... Um, that was, like, it seemed like a, a good thing at the time, but now I'm wondering if it was a good thing. Although, maybe it didn't do that. Am I remembering that right, or am I, rem I, I might be remembering that wrong, actually. I'm, I'm genuinely confused right now. I, I, honestly, I, I don't know whether that is a, a correct recollection or not. It's really weird the way that that can happen. Like, you, you, you remember something, and then it's... Like, it's, it's completely right. There is actually a technique that um, the CIA and um, other government agencies from various agencies around the world do use. And they can implant false memories in people. And it's a genuine implantation of a false memory. Not everybody. It doesn't work on everybody. Some people are more susceptible to it than others. And basically what they do is they go along and they they will say, they will describe a story describe a story that they, they just meet someone and they will say oh the the red coat that you were wearing last time you may never have owned a red coat in your life you may never have worn a red coat but they will say oh you were wearing a red coat last time and you weren't wearing a red coat and you know that you weren't wearing a red coat and you may even correct them no i wasn't wearing a red coat um and yeah they were and they'll correct you, say, yeah, you were, it, it was a red coat, I remember it. And so then, you know, that's it. You, you don't really need much more in, um... Okay, we're going to stop right there, and we're going to skip the night again. So, shift Z, like that. Um, but then they leave it a few months and go back to you and talk about your red coat again. Now, some people will genuinely, at that point things will change and they will remember wearing a red coat because this is kind of implant the way that the the little speech was done um implants essentially implants a false memory of wearing this red coat which is abs i didn't think that this was true I, th I thought this was just a complete load of nonsense there's no way that that can be true but it turns out yeah it is there is it is it's it's not like a hugely powerful tool um i'm not aware of um any instances where it has been used for nefarious gains of any kind 
either through government agency or otherwise, but I haven't really looked into it very much. It was just a, a story that I read about. And I thought, oh, that, I'm not sure if that's true, and then I, I did very, very briefly look into it, and yes, it's a... Basically, it's just power of suggestion, and some people are susceptible to power of suggestion, um, so it's not actually, you're not actually got this information being hypnotized into you or anything, um, but close to being hypnotized and having the information hypnotized onto you. So it's, it's, it's kind of weird. I don't know of any situation where it's been, like I said, where, where it's been used to like, um, tamper with a witness on any kind of, um, case or anything like that you know you, you sort of think well if people can implant false memories um how do you know that hasn't happened when someone takes the witness stand uh in in a court case or something like that you know but i don't think it's anything that detailed i, I honestly i don't but i i don't know i don't know much about it i don't know if anyone else has heard anything about that let me know in the comments section have you heard of this thing where apparently um a, me a false memory can be implanted. So I didn't really look into it very much. I didn't research it very much. The, I, the concept of it does sound very interesting to me, but putting it into practice, it doesn't seem like it would be something that would be particularly practical. doesn't seem like something that um, would be worth putting in a lot of time and effort into for um well just about anybody because i don't think you'd be able to implant enough of the right kind of memories to do anything that would prove useful like i i i don't know so anyway that's that's what i heard this uh it, it just sort of it did interest me because you know power of the mind and that sort of thing you you hear a you hear a story like that you're like nah, there's no way that could be possible that's, that's just no that's that's no no way no ab absolutely no way it turns out that maybe just maybe it can be possible but only to some people not it definitely doesn't work on everybody um that much i know for certain uh beyond that i don't know very much about the whole concept and and how it works and the full science behind it and everything else so I, I really don't know very much more about it right that is another day done and that is also the last tree that i want to cut down for now so let's just straighten that one out straighten out fly right dude you go over here like this and we'll shut you down there and leave you there for a minute and then if we go over here we don't need to go anywhere we can have a look in here so i've got planks the building storage that one's almost full this one in here furniture is almost full on that one this one it's not that one's still spawning but i've got a load there i'm gonna want to move so where's my trailer i need my other i need my lorry don't i I think actually we can we can skip one night we'll skip one night and then we once we've done that then I think the furniture there is going to be completely full it might be telling me that it's got no room for any more I don't know if it'll come up with a warning or not I know it does with animals but I don't know if it does with factories well now I've got 28,000 no it doesn't come up with a warning it's just we've run out of space for that one and there's my trailer all right, let's go back to you, and we will go whizzing up the road. So I've got a few stumps that I'm going to need to remove. I'm going to step the time up to 60 times speed, and I'm also going to want to start making this road. This is going to be the next thing that we do. We've got the houses there, and I've done a little bit of work on them, and we will do more work on them, but for now, I would like to start working on that road so that we've got that clean shot all the way through to the sawmill whenever we want it and also because it's going to take a back in there. 
here. Right, actually, when does furniture sell best? Here, June. Okay, right, so we're a couple of months away. We need to do the silage before we end up doing that. Let's drive this one round here like this, and we'll go and pick up the first four pallets off of here. So just come up next to it like that, and this one we press R, and that starts loading it. And then I actually press R and just and keep it on there, and it will go through. Do it again, just like that. There we go. Right. So that's unloaded everything that that one's got. That one had stored. Yeah, that's all of it. Everything there that that one had stored has now been moved. I'm going to run down to the other sawmill and I'm going to gather everything that that one's got currently sitting on it. And then we'll bring that one back. And then we can spend a little bit of time getting started on building that road and then we want to start doing the mowing so I'm on 30 grand 30,000 euros is a reasonable amount of money it's not enough money I want more money than that but it's enough to start off with so let's bring you in over here like that we've got four of these spawned here see this is why I quite like this one because this one has room for five pallets out the back still only got 4,000 litres in storage but it's got room for five pallets rather than four pallets which is you know just a little bit of extra storage it's not a massive amount but it's enough there are warehouse mods that allow you to accumulate more goods but I don't know if you can have things automatically delivered to the warehouse or if you've got to go and collect them and then deliver them manually to the warehouse could go either way with that one we'll run back over here and we'll load up the other five pallets that I've got on the outside over there there we go in here like this we've got a nice lot of produce here now put them on uh, stop loading and shut that one off so I'm curious how many pallets this one can load whether it will go double high on this I think it does I think it does go higher than this it like I'm um, a little bit disappointed it doesn't turn them around and load them the other direction. But, I mean, this is one of the biggest trucks that we've got for doing this loading. There are various different options that we can use. But I quite like this one being an open plan tree, uh, tree trailer. Because the other one that we have is the, under the miscellaneous, is Profiliner that one so that one's really good but you don't have an option with that one automatic loading bail loading huh bail loading oh i can choose to have bales inside that one or not i I would choose not for that particular one, but uh, yeah, the only other one was the hook lift, wasn't it? We had a hook lift here somewhere. I don't know where that one went. Right, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's go. Actually, I'm going to go here, here, construction, landscaping. Alrighty then. How am I going to do this? So I got this straight line that runs all the way up through here. Hmm. Before I can do that, I need to jump over to this one and I need to remove these stumps out of the way, otherwise, they are going to cause us problems. 
So let's get them out of the way first. And then we can start thinking about... So I'm going to need to plant... So I'm going to need to put down some plants to get rid of uh, grass in order to get rid of the... Um, all the plants up through this because we, do, we don't want that on the road. I'm not quite sure what material we'll use for the road. Maybe just a hard packed dirt road for this one. Um, if we choose to do a hard packed dirt road, let's get rid of that tree there a minute, shall we? That one can go. If we choose to do a hard packed dirt road, are we going to want, um, like anything on the edges of that hard packed dirt road? Are we just going to want the dirt road as it is? Uh, is is there any other sort of changes that we might want to make? And also, I think we'll probably end up wanting to get rid of. It. Yes, we will. We're gonna. I'm not going to want that tree there. I think that one's a little bit too close to the road. Uh, all right, let's let's leave it for a minute. It's easier to come back and cut it down later than it is to come back and put it back later. So if we leave it for now, we can always change our minds afterwards. That's probably the better option. Okay, is there any more? I think that's it for those. So let's disappear back into the trees a little bit so that we're out of the way. And construction. Right. I don't see any more. That tree there. That one. There's a few trees, especially there. There's those two. I had already identified those two as definitely being in the way. It's just these two. Those two are the only ones. They are in the way. We'll do something about them later, I think. Now, if I'm going to have a road going up through here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the landscaping and we're going to go with painting. So, at the moment, we've got animal mud. We've got dirt. And I am thinking that this one ought to be a dirt road rather than anything else. We don't want asphalt and we don't want concrete. Not to start with. Gravel, maybe. Like, maybe we could do a gravel road up through there. I'd like other options. Uh, concrete. Maybe we should do a concrete road. That's what they used to do. I've used that. Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll do a concrete road, because I know a few places where there's concrete roads been put in. Um, and they're sort of, they're not used for a great deal, but they definitely had concrete roads put in, and, I mean, the concrete roads themselves have deteriorated because they were installed during the war, but they've been used a lot since then, and, yes, there's places where it's disintegrated quite badly, but the concrete road has stood the test of time. I mean, the Second World War, when they were put in, was quite a while ago. So the concrete has stood the test of time. And to be honest, just to start with, as this is going to be a forestry track running up and down, a bit of concrete going up here is, is going to be just fine, I think. So let's... Run our line up through here. I'm not exactly in line with the line that's there, but I'm moving around just slowly enough that it's fine. I can stay on track just by drifting forwards like this. Yeah, I'm not having to. I'm pretty much staying in line with that now. It's not not a hundred percent, but mostly. So we'll go all the way through and remove the ploughed line, which is a good start for us for the road, because that ploughed line did make us bounce up and down a bit while we were driving. So if we can remove it, that's fantastic news. Then once I've done this bit, I need to go back through again, although it's now quite late in the day, so that's going to have to be for the next day. Uh, that, right, well, the, the road's actually going to come down from there, isn't it? It's going to be like that. So if I put that back now, there's grass like that. I think that'll work. 
And then we're going to want to start changing all of this. And uh, Well, I, uh, not changing. I've got to start putting the plants down. This is the... It's this bit right here. So I'm going to change that. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Uh, the advantage of this is once you put those plants in... I don't know if there's any way that you can remove the plants. Just delete them. I think the only way that you can do that is to paint again. Yes, that is the only way that you can do that, by the look of it. Because plants, I don't think there's... I don't know if I can do... No, there, there isn't like a demolish thing that you can do. So I can go back to there and... I can put like a, a line of grass up through and it will get rid of all of the, the bits and the shrubs and everything that we don't want up through here. But then I've got to go back and I've got to paint it again. However, I don't regret doing it like this because now I've got a marker to show where the edge of the line is that we've been working on. But it's the end of the day, so we want to skip over to here. We're going to spend the night, and then it's May, which means that we need to start doing our mowing. That's our next task to go and do. So we sleep the night. I'll check on the sawmill and just see how much we've got in there. Animals are on the list. I would like to keep some animals. I'm just not starting them yet. So we're on 40,000 euros at the moment. Planks in there. That's doing fine. We've got a little bit of furniture there, a little bit of furniture there. This one is now completely full. That's down to 88,000 there. So I'm, I've got one pallet here. It's not until, is it June or July? Furniture, 6-3. We're in May, June. Right, well, we're in May at the moment. So it's the end of the day today and tomorrow that the we're going to be wanting that excuse me uh okay we will leave you there with our minion weight on that one is absolutely fine we will go to you i'm going to fast forward time just a little bit to say 10 o'clock oh when does the sun come out let's have a look not till this afternoon. Right, well, we're not going to worry about that then. So we'll fast forward time until 10 o'clock. And now we will work on five times speed. Do best for now. We'll bring you over and drop that one down. So I'm up to 40,000 euros. Now, when I sell all of the furniture, I could go and buy another house. I could get an industrial unit and we could build that down next to the sawmill. I'm going to need to clear a large area in front of the sawmill. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do there. Um, just out of curiosity, get into the comments section and tell me, do you want me to be clearing the trees properly as we go, or do you want me to just use like the chainsaw mod and chop a lot of the trees down and move them out of the way like that? Because I'm happy to do either one. There's the two good options there, basically, and I'm quite happy to do either one. I really don't mind which one we do, uh, just so long as we have one that we've decided that uh, we're going to do. So, do you want to see me chopping down um, all of the trees? Start that one up. Do you want to see me chopping down all of the trees using the tree harvester? Or do you want me to chop down, you know, just a few of the trees every now and then? Keep the sawmill full and use the chainsaw mod quite a bit to clear a lot of the trees using that one. I have, I've done some with the chainsaw mod so far, but I haven't done a huge amount with it. Like, there's... There's plenty of room for me to do a bit more with that one, if that's what you want to see. But it, it depends entirely if that's what you want. If you do, I'm quite happy to chop down a whole load of them. I was originally planning to do that, but I kind of like this idea of being able to make use of the money that we get from these trees. Like, those trees are worth a, a, a vast sum of money, and we're going to need quite a bit as we build up our town here. Although, we're, we're doing all right so far. We've got 
four houses now that we're renting out. We're going to... We're, we're becoming big, big-time landlords we are now. Around this way. I love the fast speed. I, I really, really love just how quickly we can get this job done like this. I don't want to turn too sharp because... I don't want to be leaving bits of grass behind because it's just a bit of a nuisance. And then I will one down over here like this. Right, where are we going to go to finish this one off? I would say kind of like that. That seems about right here. Let's let's try that angle and see what it does. Okay, that's not quite the angle I was expecting it to go. So if I move it over this way a little bit further. There is where I want to go. Right. That's perfect. That one can now carry on and do that. And it does work at full speed with the hired help as well, which is even better. So then we can go this way. We've got our New Holland 240 Genesis Turbo. We've got 49.7 uh, litres of additive in the trailer. So we don't need any more of that. It's 60 litres, isn't it, for more additive. If we go into here, we have a look. That one, it's 60 litres. Right, so... When we get to below 30, we can load up another pallet of that. I can start driving around this field here. I do love the minion weight that we've got. That minion weight is fantastic. Tractor's come over and turned around already. Oh, I see. He's just... he's It went up. Or she went up. Turned around and did that bit there. And the next line is all the way up over here. At least they are doing it all properly. All right, that's fine. So, slow you down and start you up. Are you actually going to be able to pull this one around the field properly? Apparently, he's going to struggle with this. Ah, that's disappointing. That is very disappointing. Well, the tractor's quite cheap, isn't it? I mean, I, I think the tractor can do it without... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.